Alrighty, monthly trading recap here for the month of October 2021. <sighs> Another red month, unfortunately. I think this was less. 132, we finished at, I think it's less than September, just right around where September was. But shoot, we were on such a good track until just the latter quarter, latter third of this month when the market definitely shifted. We were putting in some nice little, maintaining a very high win rate. I think it was around 50% for a while uh, coming back from a long deficit that I was in of just taking stupid little losses and little starters and stupid trades in general from the previous months. And I think establishing myself more in substantial base trades, which was the goal for this month. Um, and the yeah, market certainly shifted on that Friday. I forget the date that was, but the DWAC runners, the PHUN runners, uh, small cappers started to come back in a heavy way. And I just was not pre prepared or ready for it. And I think I fought it a little bit, didn't necessarily cave into a full FOMO type of mentality, but uh, just kind of thrown off from what I thought I, I was getting used to or comfortable with. And great reminder that we can never get comfortable in trading. And the only thing that ever works is what works on that day. It's not about, oh, I'm developing a pattern that's going to work for a solid or guaranteed four months. It's, it's whatever happens today. That's all that matters in essence. So unfortunate that we're red once again, but uh, it's, they are all adding up to what will be great green months going forward in the future. So let's go into uh, show the calendar here to see. Uh, talk about stats compared from this month compared to last month. Win rate in total for this month, 37%, which is a great improvement over a 28% win rate from last month. Overall, in the history of what I, that I have here, I sitting around 34%. Um, like I mentioned to you, I was I was sitting right around like 50% win rate on this month just before that this whole market shift and just change in what this was the 22nd. It was, yeah, gave myself an F rating on that day. Um, average return per trade for this month, uh, I averaged a red $3.60 per trade versus last month where I was averaging minus $4.40 per trade, which overall I'm sitting still in an average of losing $3.06 per trade. So a little bit worse than average overall, but still better than last month, of course. Average return percentage that I was doing this month, I was averaging 0.29% uh, loss, whereas last month I was averaging a 1% loss on each trade. And overall, um, in the history of my trades, breaking down like a 0.02% loss that I average per trade. Biggest win this month was a 47% winner. I forget which that one was on. Uh, that was HNRG, I think, which I'll actually talk about in a little bit, but... Um, not going for big winners, not throwing big position sizes around um, in any way, shape, or form. So that's not what I was focused on and really shouldn't be focused on as a trader anyway of looking for big wins out of the gate. But last month, my biggest winner anyway was 80 bucks, And still overall, my biggest winner, I think, is sitting around 270-something. Biggest loss for this month, double that. My biggest winner, around 90, which was KVL on this 27th day here. Uh, Biggest loss last month was 140 bucks, so a little bit better in that respect. Um, we don't have to talk about the biggest loser overall. The trades that I took for this month, 48 trades compared to last month, which I took 66 trades. So I think definitely piggybacking off of that mentality of trading more substantial base trades, not the little starter feelers, not the little protection style, FOMO protection trades that I convinced myself are decent little scalpy moves, whether I get in a pre-market so many one of those stupid ones. I think those totally degrade from the trade and the chart and my whole mentality. And I'll get into a great twist episode, the most recent one with Jack, Kyle, and Mari. That was a few days ago. That was great mention on that one as well. But we'll get into that in a little bit. I traded most on Thursdays. Um, Wednesdays and Mondays were the second most trades that I had, the most numerous trading days that I had. Thursday had a 37% win rate, but my best win rate was actually on Wednesdays, which was at 55% win rate on those Wednesdays and didn't even trade the 20th. Um, and of course, my biggest losing day was on that KAVL trade on the 27th, but interesting note to go forward. So kind of still in that same spectrum where I have been that Fridays are still pretty lackluster for me for win rate for uh, P&L wise it's every aspect that the end of the week I certainly need to dial in more the refinement uh, the scanning the precision of how I execute my trades of what I'm trading in essence so I need to continue to work on that area my average winner still bigger for this month still 13 bucks which is my average loser is now sitting just under 13 bucks around like 12 28 it was the average 
So it's still good in that light of, hey, if I'm taking a winner, it's certainly going to be, if my win rate is there, the winners are certainly going to be a, at least a little bit bigger than the losers. But the percentage wise on an average loser is still 3% in the red versus my average winner, which is my average loser is 3.3% in the red, where my average winner was like 2.9%. So not the most wide range, but still interesting that I am taking bigger percentage loss wise on losers versus my winners, which I do take a little bit less percentage wise, which maybe I can factor in a little bit too for the, if I know it's going to be a loser and how I was trading the stupid little starter feeler trades that I do uh, take a smaller, I do risk a little bit more PNL wise or percentage wise, but have a smaller position size, of course, which could go into that, but I don't want to be doing that. I just, I want oh, both aspects. I want to have bigger winners than bigger losses and for PNL and percentage wise. So that is data on the month for that. Let's go into some highlighted trades that I wanted to mention. First one was on the 11th here on HNRG. Awesome little first red day trade short here. Uh, this one kind of, I feel like this one flew under the radar for a lot of other traders and I didn't really hear a lot of other people talking about this one. Uh, pretty nice run up here, which is as we're looking into, as we have now the Huddies and another one that Bowen mentioned on the pre-market prep today too. We've been seeing so many of these manipulated tickers that just have consecutive huge green day run-ups with little volume no rhyme or reason for it no catalyst to push this thing but you just get these continuous pushes to the upside so i didn't necessarily factor that this one in as one of those but just kind of playing the chart as man we got a huge exhaustion day here on the 8th for volume wise my face doesn't block it there so just trading hey an easy risk level to see here we're kind of the pre-market was hovering right around there so it's an easy cut for me if we're breaking above four six i'm absolutely going to be out of this one if it does want to just like barely tap above and then pulls back okay fine whatever you got me um, but great little trade on this one that did respect that previous high of day risk level first red day being put in i think i was absolutely sizing out of this one way too soon because of how well it was holding and just not immediately panicking or dying off but then i can also relate to that on this one that man, the run-up wasn't just immediate and crazy. So it wasn't like we were going to expect the most immediate or most volatile moves, uh, for, especially for a panic on the downside of how the downside is normally far more volatile and immediate and rapid than the run-up can be. But yeah, certainly was I was covering far too soon. I was covering in pretty smartly into some of these little flushes here in protection that this thing did start to hold any level whatever technical level wanted to and just continue to peter around and potentially maybe even this day or the next day start to put in a new high for the run up continue to be green so just protecting myself in that way but it did end up working out for a very nice little first red day trade there that it wasn't the most profitable i don't think it was the most awesome i think this was my 40 dollars winner certainly could have been a lot more and i don't think it was the greatest percentage wise because i was covering so much and i didn't have the most huge position size that maybe i should have been throwing it for how convicted i was in the trade <coughs> initially but a good one to learn from nonetheless uh, and it's just another representation for myself too that it doesn't have to be i hold myself accountable to like whatever just ideal price action should look like that there's no dojis at any point during the day that it's consistent trading like looking at this last day here that you know it's kind of choppy we're getting a little bit of non-trading minute candles here it's just very wicky bottoms for some reason just not the most clean or beautiful pristine type of chart but it doesn't have to be especially looking at the OTC t sector, if that starts to heat up for the winter months here coming up, I've got to be more open and not so close minded to those style of trades. That was HNRG on the 11th. Also wanted to mention OCGN, which was a little bit of a swingy style of trade on the 14th. Um, and this one is moving very well today on the 1st of November here as well to this trading day, which is kind of biting me in the butt, but looked at this one as a little bit more of a swinger. I think I started in on this day and could have, should have, would have been scaling out for an intraday trade on this one. Uh, it was only up 8% at the close here from the previous trading day. So it's not like the most awesome or volatile intraday style of trade. But regardless, I was looking at this one for more of a swingy style of play for what it's done in the past for these crazy parabolic moves. I forget the float specifically on this one, but it was very nice. How I was scaling in in the morning, we get a pullback, call it a little bear or bullish flag. That gets you around VWAP as it breaks this line trend here. Continue a nice move to the upside, tap in 10.6. Very nice trade on that one that I ended up, actually, I took up a few shares into the Peaks 
here on this day, but in super small position size in this one, just the experiments, the experience of being in a maybe longer term swing play, just uh, getting that data on that one. But in the next few days, I did actually buy a dip that I thought was going to be a nice little, uh, it was perfect dip by within the two hour, three hours, but then it did eventually end up breaking that low, continue to just die and bleed off. And if we look at it today, if we go out of demand here, <laughs> compared to where we were looking there, then we pull back and it was just looking kind of like holding strength and then it was continuing to break those lows. So that's why I cut it here. And then we get immediate reversal after that. So whoopee, you got me again. But learning every single day with one of those, with those ones. WTRH also wanted to mention on the 18th that I traded this. This one's got my number a few times. I think I traded it pretty hard on that Friday, the 22nd, which was the DWAC and the PHUN day. Uh, that got pretty crazy and volatile and took a bit of a bigger position size than I maybe normally would have, and that induced a larger loss than I was potentially ready for. And getting in that day, of course, everybody else in their grandma is making huge amounts of money, the best PL days they've ever had, and I'm, I'm losing stupid money on a stupid ticker. Getting that downward spiral, but. Regardless, coming back to the trade today, this one had that third day surge attempt on the previous trading day and still holding around. These multi-day movers have just been continually popping up over and over again. We have the PROGs, PBTS is another ticker that comes to mind, and I think there's a few more that I'm obviously missing. But this one, you get the perk in the afternoon session from yesterday, holding VWAP, goes into the close, continually holding these levels, just hugging that 1-4 line. Pre-market coming into this Monday, the next week continuing to hold, continuing to hold, building with a little bit of volume. VWAP is climbing into the morning bell and just very, very nice. Uh, not huge, not amazing, not home run, but very nice trading opportunity there out of the gate right away within the morning session, which is what I got to be, what best suits me for a trade. There's a stupid little smudge on the computer, uh, which certainly suits me best as a trader of moves happening immediately right at the opportunity of volatility, which is most obvious, the morning open, um, or just whenever I get the entry point of it. It's, it just doesn't chop around. It doesn't try to screw you over. Um, take your mind. Of course, it's hard to find in this environment where everything is trying to screw you over, but man, of these opportunities that are there to capitalize on, those are the ones I absolutely love to be a part of. Uh, those are the three triggers that I only really had to mention for what was a pretty lackluster month of trading any real big swing, any real big tickers for me, or any even big position size whatsoever. And of course, no references that I want to include to the DWAX, to the PHUNs. Let's go here to, uh, like call it the 25th, so we can see this action on oh, this crazy day. Wasn't a part of any of it. This is These were great, incredible opportunities, and um, PHUN, the same thing that we can pull up here that was a little bit of a sympathy to this, these insane parabolic moves. Did buy opportunities that were there. Did not take any part of it because I just tend to shy away from it. I don't feel like I'm at that stage yet where I have the luxury and freedom of capital maybe to do that. And the same dilemma that I run into again of how much time and dedication should I put into learning these patterns? Because they are pretty, like if you want to look at this, if you want to call it what it is, these are OTC supernovas, right? They're just the crazy, and they unfortunately have to have the halts in there, which is screw a lot of the fun of it. But they are supernova parabolic panic movers. The penny step, seven step process of you get the consolidation, the run up, the crazy supernova spike, shorting the top, which was a great reference as well too in that twist of, I've heard that before from Jack, that he looks at picking the tops as a short as a reverse dip buy, which you can kind of get, it's the same light of trying to go long on a dip buy, you got to be very careful and you can get, um, you've got to be precise if you're getting stopped out, if it's going to go against you. But looking at it in the exact same light as a reverse dip buy, as a short, for trying to pick these tops or even just with these lists, it's, it's so easy to see here that after we get one candle, after one halt to the downside, it's going to take a heck of a lot to push this thing up continually for it to keep going, especially with how parabolic it is. But once you get that first time in, the next time it opens, if you're able to get filled, man, that's an easy and just beautiful trade to your favor if you're going short on these ones. And then covering at the bottom, 
reversing the trade, going long to playing that dip, then going short at the peak there, playing it to more downside. This one actually broke to a new low after that dip, which is a beautiful, another short there, just repeatable, beautiful patterns that come straight from the penny, tri penny stock handbook. <sighs> so yeah, still dealing with that dilemma of, do I really want to touch these? Do I really want to spend my mental capital and time trading these ones when these don't patterns in the listed sector, they don't come out that often. We get the DUX, PHUNs once, twice a year. We get the GMEs and AMCs, right? The crazy craziness every 10 years, right? Maybe if that. So just the amount of time and the amount of effort I put, the, I mean, these are year makers for some of these traders, right? Like the Stephen Duxes, the Kyle Williams, like, all of the big guys, I mean, Stephen Ducks, especially too, of making millions within these days. Like that's your, that can be your whole year, but especially with my mindset too. And as I'm still learning and still continuing to chip away at the experience of, I do not want to put all my chips in one basket on this one set of that, man, I got to pull at least a hundred percent move here or uh, th this whole entire year is just going to be waste. That's totally not how I want to trade. Not how I want to be a part of these ones, but continue to just dabble, get my feet in the water. My, at least a little bit of my toes in there. And I think I did that pretty well. Um, just even attempting to try and buy the dip. I think I did buy one share on the dip one, this one that got me faked out there. But being a part of it and be, <laughs> playing as a small fish in a huge, gigantic pond is the st are the starting steps that I need to be doing if and when these patterns do come again because they're very easily recognizable. It's not like I have to go scanning for them. Everybody and their grandma is going to be spitting them out from the rooftop saying, look at this chart over here. It's going to be very easy to identify when they come back around again and just predictable, repeatable patterns, just like that. So, <sighs> talking about, I also was short, maybe we're potentially seeing morning dumpers come back around. I wrote that in. But I really didn't believe it even after this first day. This 19th was an awesome opportunity on the OLB, which wasn't a biotech sector play, but got short. It just felt that the opportunity was there as it got news catalyst right around that 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time frame. So very beautiful trade on that one, which is a pattern I've practiced so many times over now and heavily always looking for the opportunities if they are there and if that pattern is coming back for a highly probable win rate over and over again which we will see if and ever again it does want to come back around. But this was really the only opportunity I think that happened for this month. I think there was one maybe earlier in the month, but um, yeah, I wrote that, oh, they're starting to come back around again, but uh, this was really the kind of last one for October. Started getting into more swings, like I mentioned with OCGN and Any Naked. Any was more of a crypto type of play as we were coming back with Bitcoin on the... Uh, 60k new all-time highs that we were slapping um, so looking for this one as a sympathy or as a kind of secondary Mara or riot that it would potentially want to lead some of these again we were holding this nice little range and it was looking pretty nice on this big volume day on the 11th here I was getting entries around here but then it just didn't have any conviction didn't want to follow along precisely with that Bitcoin price action and I think we did actually tap all-time highs one day and it just blah. The pre-market was nothing. I remember that day as well too, because I know Jackaroo was heavily on the OTC to, OTC sector, looking for Bitcoin plays, and he even wrote in the chat like, "What the heck is this? So boring." Just nothing was wanting to follow along with Bitcoin at all-time highs, and we definitely did not have the news catalysts like Bitcoin in the actual news. No real mention on, yeah, of course, you can call it social media, but not a huge and heavy presence in any news media outlet or just nobody talking about it. So I think that was really the reason that it was just kind of a silent party for those that were interested for the new Bitcoin all-time high and still we're holding around 60-ish K, I think, as of right now on this 1st of November here. Uh, but very interesting to see that I think that was one of the main reasons for as we tapped above 60 K that first time, the huge volatility that ensued from that just didn't happen this time because there was no press coverage, no real pushing that down people's throats that, hey, you need to be involved in this, and it didn't happen for this time. Um, <laughs> yeah, OCGN, naked, very small sizes that I was swinging with those just as more educational, experimental trades to get my toe in the water with swinging, see if that really fits my bill that 
looking at these more of a daily perspective rather than just screwing myself over all the time on intraday, uh, intraday trader in that sense. But just didn't really come as a huge, awesome um, win. Not that I'm going to completely shift over now to swing trading, but just, yeah, continuing to span, expand my horizons, understand different technical levels, how different things work with and mesh with each other in this world of trading. And, uh, yeah, that was kind of that. So now going back to, yeah, as we get to this 22nd market, certainly shifted. And then I mentioned a little bit before that, you yeah, know, how much do I really want to devote to spending time on learning these stickers? And I'm certainly going to do it, but it's just like, again, how many, t do how much time do I want to put into that resource when it, doesn't happen repeatedly. You know, the, my best and most uh, best personality fit is in the consistent, repeatable trade of the morning dump trade when it was working flawlessly. It was pretty much every single day that we were getting at least something that could dump to the downside. And it's because that's what's just what I love getting the reps in time and time and again, like in a hot 2020 market for the panic dip buys, man, those things were like three minimum a day and getting the reps in with that. I certainly feel far more advanced trading a panic dip buy than I ever would have if I didn't have that experience. Now trying to learn from one every quarter, maybe if it gets good enough, which even these ones right now aren't even an awesome enough panic dip buy that we were seeing in that hot 2020 market. So that's totally where I want to go as a trader of, it's unfortunate that I have to say that and that I hold myself to that, that, oh, I can't, I'm not going to be the greatest if I don't have the reps in. But um, I, with everything in life, I think it's certainly about you got to get that experience. And you can't call yourself awesome if you just done it one time, if you just randomly are luckily able to get it. And that's what trading can kind of get you in that situation sometimes that you may be able to pull out a win some way somehow with what is a losing trade and a losing chart. Um, and the reverse is definitely true on that vice versa as well. <sighs> I uh, also wanted to mention that, man, I was a lot of these days are A ratings in my book. I started off the month with A, 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 uh, B, ending the week on that first week, A rating, B rating, D rating for that 13th. But lots and lots of A's that I have on here for what I was giving myself an F on that 22nd day. But holding myself accountable to that substantial trade goal that quit doing these little starter feeler trades get into the sniper execution mindset, which I think is going to be my goal going forward for this next month here of November. But it's all about adaptation, right? I was convincing myself in this month, I'm, okay, you're, just, you're, hold, you're having the right mindset, you're still taking losses, you're not nailing it, but you're uh, still focusing on what your goal is for this month. But again, too, it's, man, you got to adapt. If the market is telling you to something totally different, and I'm still like putting my thumb up and about like, hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing awesome. And I can look type. I can still type in an A rating, even if my P&L shows super hard red. It doesn't make a difference. At the end of the day, it's all got to be about what's the P&L say. It's got to be green. At the end of this career, it's got to be green. That is the only thing that does matter at the end of the day. It's about buying low, selling high, selling high, buying low. That's what it boils down to beyond all the charts, beyond all the technical levels and crap. It's just comes down to those basic factors and at some point the adaptation does have to happen that okay if my grading scale must be off or i must be doing a totally different thing than what everybody else is doing that um i'm still taking losses but my a rating is there too maybe we've got to look at changing something up right in that sense <sighs> but going off of that yeah so for next month i totally think it's going to be breaking down my goals in this monthly sector wise monthly time frame wise uh, i still find value in it and i still think that's a good enough time frame for now and how i'm trading in the present moment and i think going on for this month of november i want to piggyback off of the substantial evidence-based trades hard working scanning uh, finding my own vision and what the chart could potentially do not what somebody else is finding or just piggy just stealing what somebody else's watch list is but doing my own due diligence, combing through all the SEC files, uh, whatever it takes on the fundamental side, the technical analysis side, but then going into that of uh, being precise and sniper-like with the entries and executions. Trade that 
is blanking my mind now too that the BKKT I think is the ticker on one of those daily recaps that man I was just so off with my entries and exits and just super sloppy and picking tops with my buys and of course it's very small position size and that's how I'm able to stay a little bit of a smaller in the red but still taking losses I think that's a huge huge factor for me in my trades that gets me in total tough situation of not allowing the trade to breathe when I have a super bad entry execution or when I'm just chasing trades. Uh, it, of course, gets me less PL. I have to wait for more of a move to come. I have to push more out of the stock in order to be look, getting what I think should be there if I'm getting a terrible chasing entry, stupid entry beyond what I should be. So many different factors that go into the entry and exit, of course but entry more especially that I don't even factor in that I haven't even been able to capture because I just haven't been so precise with my entries. I've been still in that frame of mind that, man, it's uh, I can just take a small position size or convince myself it's a little bit of a starter and be a little bit sloppier with my entry. But then how much am I learning from that? You know, Different patterns can acquire different tastes for that light, but it's this month I'm going to, I want to hammer hard on the entry and exit uh, side of things and I think I did that very well for looking at the daily recap today very tempted and very wanting to push on ABVC was a ticker today um, shoot the other one is blanking my mind now but uh, how tempted I was and I could just feel myself going into that old mindset of okay it's looking nice here within the morning volatility it's spiking green it's something just lights up in my brain that I see green and go oh shoot okay, time to buy and then those are the times that I just get very chasey entries I'm buying where everybody else is starting their short, right? And I just do that time and time again. And I think I, s I do not want to do that, of course. It's very easy for me to say, but today was a great start on the right foot to get going on that path of trade the patterns. Quit, cr quit trying to scalp for these stupid little trades when you don't even have a pattern that you're trading as of right now. If there's no pattern to trade that you don't see, then just continue to sit on the sidelines. And if everybody else and their grandma is making money, learn from them, see what you're not seeing, and continue to move forward. Apply what you're learning from them into your own training. But don't try to just create anything out of thin air, I think is um, a key factor that I'm certainly missing there, is trying to push these stocks to do more than what they're saying to do. So great mention with that one. I think to close it off here, certainly um, the afternoon fader strategy that I've kind of been tracking a little bit more is something that I definitely want to start hammering as well, potentially starting to actually trade. Took a little bit of a paper trade mentally uh, that I was holding myself accountable to here in my notes on the day. But I think that trade is shown itself to be very probable. No hard data that I've collected on it, but just from intuition, from what mental data I have seen from that, I think it could certainly be following along the ranks of the morning dump trade that I have identified and I have in the past charted well, taken hard notice of it, and then put it into play and put it into action for a repeatable, probable trade setup that defines a career, creates a career, unlike the stupid little scalpy morning volatility chasey trades that just end up screwing me over in the long run. Uh, it's all about consistency. It's all about maintaining the discipline for what I'm doing after hours, what's what I'm doing outside the trading time frame, just my mentality that I carry into the market hours itself too. So many different factors. Uh, but I think we're certainly going in the right direction and um, glad to be a part of it. Just continuing to learn from each and every single one of these months. Of course, this month would have been a little better uh, if we took out this the day on the 27th where I took a hard loss on KAVL for a dip and ripper. Um, that was an interesting little daily recap on that one. But, of course, I can you can say that with a lot of months of, oh, well, if you took out this trade, it would be a lot better month. But you can't. This is what this month must, and we got to go move forward on to the next. I think that's all I had. I sincerely thank you guys for watching this far. Uh, if you did, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. We're looking to tackle it next month, going into the winter, or the end of the year here. Especially get on our high horse for that January and February market. Um, and we will continue to hit it hard, as always. Thank you for watching. We will catch you guys on the next one.